And again, is it okay if I turn your britches down just a little bit? Yeah. Close your side lens. For a full evaluation of the pelvis, we're going to look at the movements that take place in the ilium, movements that take place in the sacrum, and also we should be looking into also L4 and L5 of the lumbar spine. For the ilium, we have four movements, anterior and posterior glide, medial and lateral glide. Our segmental contact point on this left side is going to be the SI joint itself, and it's called the sacral sulcus. And just meet up to the PSIS, I'm going to take my two fingers of my superior hand and place them in a position right in the joint line where I can feel both the sacrum and the ilium. I'm going to be looking at the movement or lack of movement that takes place between these two bones. For posterior glide, I'm going to reach around and contact the ASIS, and lightly by taking my hand and moving relative to the ASIS, A to P, I want to see if there's movement and or separation between the ilium and the sacrum. And I do feel this movement, so posterior glide I think is going to be normal. For anterior glide, I'm going to utilize the leg. By lifting the leg or the hip up into extension, it'll anteriorly rotate the ilium relative to the sacrum, and once again, I should feel movement. For my body part, for my doctors, I'm going to take a fencer stance to protect my back. I'm going to cup his knee, and then from here, what I'm going to do is, using my body, I'm going to raise his leg to feel if the ilium is gliding anteriorly relative to the sacrum. I do feel it. I don't feel it as much as I did with posterior glide, but there is some movement. The question is sometimes, how far do we raise the leg? As soon as I begin to see the lumbar spine engage, I no further lift this leg of an extension. If I haven't felt movement by then, there isn't any, there is an absence of. But it does have a decrease in anterior glide relative to posterior glide so far. I'm now going to assess medial glide and lateral glide. For medial glide, I'm looking at the movement of the PSIS towards the midline. To do this, I'm going to flex the knee, and then I'm going to bring his heel across his body. I do feel movement between the ilium and the sacrum, therefore medial glide is maintained. How far do I drop the leg across the body? As soon as I begin to see his hip begin to rise off the table, there's no need to go any further than this. You've either felt movement by then or not. For lateral glide, or the movement of the PSIS away from the midline, this time I'm going to take the leg and I'm going to drop it away from his body towards the outside here. And once again, I feel movement and or separation between the ilium and the sacrum. So it seems both medial and lateral glide are intact. How far do I push the leg outward before I stop? Once again, as soon as I begin to see the hip begin to lift on this side, there's no need to go any further than this. So, so far looking at his sacrum, he has a slight decrease in anterior glide of all the motions that's been assessed.